Tan Teck Hao, our only prose writer for this evening. Teck Hao is a lawyer and the author of The Secret Goldfish and Other Follies. He also wrote and directed the pilot episode The Flower Shop of The Drive TV anthology series, which was executive produced by Eric Koo. Right, may we put our hands together to welcome Teck Hao. Well, actually, if you, if you look at my title, I, I, I don't agree with Charles Bukowski. Uh, certainly, I think, uh, from my own experience uh, writing prose, uh, it is hard work. And uh, as, as Mika said earlier, uh, it's something that you've got to... Uh, it's like a discipline. You've got to devote yourself to it. You've got to nurture it. You've got to set aside a certain uh, amount of time every day if you can to do it. Okay, It's an accumulation of hours and hours of effort. Okay, I'm not trying to put you off, but that, that is the truth. Certainly, uh, 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 for prose writing. Now, I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not enjoyable. It, it is. I mean, there are certain parts of what I wrote that just flow down on me, and, uh, you know, very, very easily, very smoothly. But there are other parts that need work, that need you to knuckle down and think about how you want to write something, and how you want to structure a certain chapter, think about how you want to develop a plot, or think about how you want to develop a character. And that, that involves work, okay? Um, that, that's been my experience, and I'd just like to share that with you. So, so that, that's uh, in relation to, to prose writing, a single tip. And any, anybody who's interested in writing prose now? <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing I wanted to share uh, with you this evening uh, is uh, my experience writing uh, for the screen. Anybody just in writing from the screen or from TV? No? All poets? <laughs> really? All <laughs> poets, not writers. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, um, I thought that uh, um, uh, just, just for interest, I'd show you a, a clip of, of what I've done uh, for Flower Shop. Uh, two scenes. One, I think, uh, uh, the, well, maybe uh, for screenwriting, what, what I just say is that. A large part of screen writing, of course, is writing dialogue, which I think is very tricky. Um, it's something that um, uh, some people are able to do quite easily, and some people find it very difficult to cross. So I'm going to show you two scenes, um, one of which I think is uh, quite well-written dialogue, and another one which I think is not so good dialogue. And perhaps you can watch it first, and then I'll give you my thoughts about that later. And uh, like Kai Cha, I'm afraid I'm going to have to use up my uh, five minutes uh, of a lot of time. So if you uh, just bear with me. I've got no more money for you, okay? Don't say that. I just came to have dinner with you. Come, eat that. Mm. Okay. How's our boy, huh? Okay, always busy in the U. Hmm. I might not let him study, get a degree, get a good job. Mm. <laughs> then you and I relax, huh? Mm. Hey. Got any girlfriend? Oh no, he never tells me anything. Maybe you should interrogate him. No la, he won't tell me. I never told my father about you. I never told my father about any of my girlfriends. You never told me about your girlfriends. <sighs> Clara, tonight, can we make peace treaty? Please? No. <laughs> so, all things on your side. Okay, la, you know, the usual get together with the boys. Have a couple of beers, play cards. No, mind, no, mind. Better you don't tell me. So how's business? Okay, good. Mm. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. What? Not enough. Huh? No, I got good news. I got a job. Since when? Omar called me this afternoon and he said 
there's a job opening in his company. And I told him, yeah, I understand that I'm broke. I've been jobless for a while. Mm. So I asked him for an advance. And you know what? <coughs> he gave it to me. <laughs> Congrats. Thanks. I really, really got to go, yeah? Mm. Otherwise, that one will make noise, huh? Okay. Listen, if there's any work you have to do or anything, mm. you let me know, yeah? All right. Any repairs or anything, call me, huh? Yes, sure. Sure not. Bye. Bye. Bye, honey. I love you. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got this friend. Elaine, you know her, right? Elaine? Of course I know Elaine. She's the type who only want a rich guy, okay? She cannot live in a HDB flat, cannot take public transport, must always go to the restaurant and eat, okay? Yeah, like there's this once, right? We took the bus with her, she didn't even know where to put in the coins. Of course. She like chauffeur the school every day, right? But at least she's honest enough to admit it, okay? All the other girls, they want the same thing, but they won't ever admit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, did you read the interview with Donna soon for eight days now? They asked her, right, what kind of guy she wanted. She said, only mature men need to apply. Of course, mature means what? Old, rich, and chauffeur around with some big car. That's really sad, eh? Yeah, but that's life, what? That's what society is all about. It's all about money. All this talk about, what? Investing in shares, upgrading, asset appreciation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's something I never understood, you know. All the prices of property go up, right? They call it asset appreciation. I always thought it was called inflation, right? Of course, it's inflation. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Your flat appreciate. Other people's flat also appreciate. In the end, everything becomes more expensive. Inflation, la. I mean, it's all about money, la. What kind of clothes you wear, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in, where you send your kids to school. I mean, that's what this place is all about, right? So, Mr. Social Commentator, all you can do, right, is complain. But what are you going to do about it? Um, Jonah, maybe write a book about it. I won't hold my breath, though. Okay, I don't know about uh, you, but um, I thought that the first uh, sort of scene the one that the couple were talking was much better in terms of dialogue in the second one. Simply because it was more natural, it was more playful, you know, more, more spontaneous. For the second scene, it started off quite well, but towards the end it got a bit, you know, clunky and clumsy because, you know, you can see that the writer is just putting words in the mouth of the, you know, the character. He's just spewing thoughts on the writer. And one of the things I found uh, in terms of uh, writing is that when you're writing dialogue, you need to be invisible as a writer. You know, if you want to avoid a situation where it is very obvious that you're just putting words into the mouth of the character, you know, it's as if you're just going in there and working in like a puppet master, and he's just uh, you know spewing your words, and, and you've got to sort of uh, uh, make it such that the words come out of the character naturally, because if it's just a platform for you know uh, your words, then then it doesn't work. I mean, to be honest, when I wrote that, that second scene, uh, I thought it was brilliant. You know, when I wrote it, it looked great on the, on the page, but when it was performed, when I watched it, it, it didn't work. It, I thought it was, it was a bit clumsy, so that, that's something that I want to leave you with when, when, when you're writing dialogue. Right? Thank you.